Hey there, and welcome to Module 5, Video 4. In this video, we'll be discussing how to find probabilities of compound events by using formulas. We're going to build on our results from Video 3, so if you haven't watched that video, I recommend that you make sure you go back and do that first. Let's get started. In the previous video, we looked at this example. A class of 30 students was asked whether they were a parent or not, and the results were compiled in the two-way table below. The first part of this example was to determine the probability that a person is either a male or a parent, or both. We found this probability by adding together those who were males but not parents, those who were parents but not males, and those who overlapped in those two categories. We found a numerator of 1 plus 11 plus 4, and we divided by the total number of people, which was 30. This gave us a probability of 16 thirtieths, or 0.5 repeating threes. This is just one way that we could have found this probability. Let's look at a second but slightly different way that we could have computed exactly the same result. An alternate way to find this probability would be to take the number of males and the total number of parents and add them together. However, there's a small problem with using these totals. In this case, that total of 12 males includes the one person who is both male and parent. Similarly, the total for five parents also includes that one person who is both a male and a parent. So if I were just to use the 12 and the 5 to compute my total, I would be double counting this one person who overlaps both that row and the column. So in order to adjust for that double counting, I could add 12 and 5 together and then subtract the 1. Then I would still keep the same denominator of 30 because there's 30 people. And when I simplify my numerator, I end up with once again 16 out of 30, or 0.5 repeating threes. This alternate method of finding the probability of male or parent is going to give us a formula that we can use. We can just take the total number of males plus the total number of parents minus the number of males who were parents. In other words, we'll take the probability of men plus the probability of parents minus the probability of male and parent. So here's what that formula looks like. The first formula is the one that we just mentioned. You can find the probability of x or y by finding the probability of x plus the probability of y and subtracting the probability of x and y. If you rearrange that first formula, you can end up with the second formula. The probability of x and y is the same as the probability of x plus the probability of y minus the probability of x or y. Now, one thing to note is that these formulas can be a little bit tricky if you always think literally in terms of x's and y's. In particular, sometimes your variables won't be x's or y's, and sometimes your variables will be words. So the way that I think of these formulas is things like first event, second event. So the probability of a first or a second is the same as the probability of the first plus the probability of the second minus the probability of the first and the second. Also, notice that whether I said x and y, or if I said y and x, it's the same thing. Similarly, x or y is the same thing as y or x, so we can change the order of the letters when we're using AND and OR. Let's do a couple of examples of using these formulas. According to the Vegetarian Times website, 3.2% of U.S. adults are vegetarians, and approximately 1.89% of U.S. adults are women and vegetarian. According to Wikipedia, 51.3% of U.S. adults are women. To help me answer any future problems, I like to make what I call a summary off to the side or on the top of the page wherever there's some space. There are really two types of events that are being discussed in this problem. Those who are vegetarians and those who are women. In this case, when I read that 3.2% of US adults are vegetarians, I'm going to summarize that by saying the probability of V is 0.032. I'm using V here to help me remember that this is for vegetarians, 
and I turned that 3.2% into 0.032 into the decimal form. The next piece of information that we were told is that 1.89% of U.S. adults are women and vegetarian. Notice that we have now been told a compound event. In this case, that 1.89% refers to individuals who are both women and they are vegetarian. So I can summarize this information by saying the probability of W and V is 0.0189. I'm using W for women and continuing to use V for vegetarian. Lastly, we've been told that 51.3% of US adults are women. Since I've already used W for women, I'm going to summarize this by saying the probability of W is 0.513. Now, you won't always be told to write these kinds of summaries. In fact, often you won't be told to do this. However, it is the number one thing that seems to help the most. Trust me, I was the student who hated having to write extra stuff down. I get it, it's irritating and annoying, but I cannot tell you how helpful it is to both list the information out and also to begin assigning variables. The reason the variables are helpful is because they help us relate back to those formulas that we looked at earlier. And the reason that the summary is helpful is so that we don't confuse the information. In particular, if I were reading really quickly and I just looked back up at this paragraph, I might see 1.89% of US adults are women and just use 0.0189 as the probability of women. Again, I can't stress this enough, writing the summary is the number one thing that seems to help the most when dealing with these kinds of examples. So I very, very strongly recommend it. So let's do some problems. Part A, what is the probability that a US adult is not a woman? Now, there are a couple different ways to think about this question, but one way is by using complements. Since the adult is not a woman, that's the same as the probability of woman complement, or the complement of W. In video two of this module, we said that the formula for the complement was to take one minus the probability of the event. In this case, one minus the probability of W is going to be one minus 0.513, which is 0.487. Notice that having that summary on the top of the screen helps us to identify the variable really easily when we need to substitute it into the formula. Now, I'll also point out that you could also reason the solution to this problem by thinking 51.3% of adults are women, so if I subtract 51.3% from 100%, that'll give me 48.7%, or a probability of 0.487. That's also a totally legitimate and correct way of finding a solution to this problem. The reason that I chose to use the complement here for the first way of doing this problem is because sometimes I might just ask you to find what is W complement. In that case, you need to be able to make the connection between the notation and the words. Being able to be fluid and translate from math into English is super important for this module. Let's look at another example. What is the probability that a US adult is a woman or a vegetarian? In this case, we've been asked to find a compound probability, the probability of W or V. Remember that our formula for an or is the same as the probability of the first plus the probability of the second, minus the probability of the and. In other words, the probability of W plus the probability of V minus the probability of W and V. I want to point out that when we say the probability of W and V, that doesn't mean the probability of W along with the probability of V. You want to think of W and V as its own kind of event that's separate from W or just V. When I look up at the top of the screen, the information that we summarized is all of the information we need in order to compute this compound probability. We can substitute in 0.513 for the probability of W, 0.032 for the probability of V, and 0.0189 for the probability of W and V. When I carry out the operations, I end up with 0.5261. Now, one thing that I want to point out when we're using the formulas for probabilities is remember that probability is always between 0 and 1. If you get a negative answer, or if you get an answer that is bigger than 1, you should know automatically something is wrong. 
A common mistake on a problem like part A is subtracting in the wrong order or subtracting the wrong things. If you were to do that, you might get a negative number, in which case you would know that something was fishy. A common mistake for a problem like part B is leaving off minus the probability of W and V. In other words, a common mistake for part B is just to add two numbers together. In this case, it wouldn't happen, but it is possible that when you add two probabilities together, you end up with a number that is bigger than one. If that should happen, a flag should go off and you should know that you've done something wrong. So that check of making sure your answer is in the correct range can help guide you as to whether or not you've used a correct formula. Let's do one more example of a compound probability. According to the Pew Research Center, approximately 1.6% of Americans are Mormon. And according to a Gallup poll, about 26% of Americans identify as Republican. If the probability that an American is Mormon or Republican is 0.2648, determine the probability that an American is both Mormon and Republican. Before we begin this example, I strongly recommend that we write down a summary of information given to us. If you'd like practice in writing your own summary, please pause the video here. When you finish summarizing your information, you can unpause the video and check your work against my work. Here's how I've decided to summarize the information. Reading through the paragraph again, I notice that about 1.6% of Americans are Mormon. In this case, the event is being Mormon, so I'm going to use M to symbolize this. So the probability of M is 0 0.016. Then, according to the Gallup poll, about 26% of Americans identify as Republican. Since this event is dealing with Republicans, I'm going to use a capital R. So the probability of R is 0.26. Lastly, we were told that the probability that an American is Mormon or Republican is 0.2648. In this case, notice that the connecting word they've used is an OR, so we've been told a compound probability. The probability of M or R is 0.2648. Lastly, we can write the question in symbols as well. We've been asked to determine the probability that an American is both Mormon and Republican. This is another compound probability using the word AND, so we need to find the probability of M and R. How did you do with your summary? If you use different letters than I did, that's totally fine. For example, if you want to use X and Y, or you could even just use the words in parentheses if that's easier for you as well. Use whatever technique is going to help you out the most. In order to answer this question, we need a formula for the probability of M and R. The formula says that we can take the probability of M and add it to the probability of R. But then remember we need to subtract the probability of M or R. Since we made the summary on the left, we already have all the values we can plug in. So we'll just substitute. 0 0.016 for the probability of M, 0 0.26 for the probability of R, and 0 0.2648 for the probability of M or R. When we simplify, we end up getting a 0.0112. And there we go, the probability that an American is both Mormon and Republican is 0.0112, or about 1.12% of the population. Thanks for watching this video about compound events and formulas. If you'd like to review compound events and two-way tables, you can click on the arrow to the left. In the next video, we'll be discussing a third type of compound probability called a conditional probability. In that video, we'll be using a two-way table to find that probability. Thanks for watching and have a wonderful day.